traditional history of Christianity is hopelessly inadequate in the face of historical evidence. From our research on spirituality in ancient times, it has become clear that we must revise our understanding of the origins of Christianity in the strongest and most influencing way possible. Our conclusion, based on a substantial body of evidence in our book The Jesus Mysteries, is that Christianity was not a new revelation. It was a continuation of paganism by another name. The story of Jesus, according to the Gospels, is not a biography of a historical messiah. It is a Jewish compilation of ancient pagan myths of death and resurrection of Osiris, Dionysus, that had been popular for many centuries throughout that area of the ancient Mediterranean. Timothy Freck, Peter Gandhi, quoted by Michael Tsarion. I have examined all the superstitions of the world and do not find in our superstition of Christianity a single quality that sustains it. All religions are based on fables and mythology. Millions of innocent men, women and children since the introduction of Christianity have been burned, tortured, fined and imprisoned. For what purpose and what effect has this manipulation had? Making half the world's population fools and the other half hypocrites by sustaining and perpetuating such terrible errors throughout the world. Thomas Jefferson Now, in which direction will we go? What do you suggest? The topic is so complex that it is difficult to think in chronological order. Yes, I have a strong suggestion. The most obvious direction to take? Astrotheology. And so far we have not touched it. We have only given the historical, political context. Now we have to include the astro part. Astrotheological myths on which they have based themselves to build the character of Jesus. A quote by William Henry Burr from his book Revelations of the Antichrist is even more relevant than the ones I included above. It goes hand in hand with astrotheology. Translating from German, because I don't have the book in Spanish or English. Those initiates in the sacred mysteries knew that the stories in and of the Gospels were or are false, but they considered it necessary to continue the imposition for the purpose of state propagandism. While this transition of faith was in process, some of the more conscientious teachers began to reveal that the character of Jesus Christ they were worshipping was not a historical character. This was being guarded by the conservative clergyman as an extremely dangerous revelation. So John denounces the innovators as liars and he calls them antichrists knowing that both he and his clergymen were liars and that the antichrists were telling the truth. Error prevailed and the Jesus of myth became the historical Jesus. William Henry Burr often barungen des Antichristen. The important thing about these quotes is to give a framework in which it is seen that it is not only us who are revealing this. It could not be or be more sustained there on earth. Another quote, it is important to remember 
that in the Bible the words authorized and original are not equivalent to genuine and authentic or true. It only means that it is authorized by a higher authority. William Henry Burr In ancient times, in Egypt, where all this began, the new year began in the sign of Virgo, which at that time began around July 25th, has moved through the natural procession of the stars over time. This coincided with or observed when the ascent of the Nile began and the star Sirius was at the zenith. This is when the sun rose on the horizon in the constellation Virgo, the Virgin. From very ancient times, the constellation Virgo has always been regarded as the goddess. So, logically, if the year begins in Virgo, the year would end in the zodiac sign before Virgo, Leo, after a procession of 12 signs. This is why we have the sphinxes that have the head of a woman and the body of a lion. The zodiac was represented in a single symbol. The sphinx always had the head of a woman. Those who claim otherwise are only ignorant. Its purpose was to be a symbol of Egypt, saying that we are expert astrologers, the land of Egypt. Put together the first zodiac symbol, Virgo, and the last sign, Leo, and you have a sphinx. It was said at that time that when the sun rose on the horizon in the sign of Virgo, the sun was born again, hence the concept of born of a virgin. It is not parthenogenesis, although there are parallels. It is important to see that to be born of the sun for the Egyptians means renewal of life since the irrigation of the slopes of the Nile begins and with this the resurgence of agriculture, which in turn means that life resurfaces, this from the point of view of sun worship. At that time the Sphinx looked to the horizon where it was dawning in the constellation of Virgo, at night, the constellations of Virgo and Leo rose from the horizon before the eyes of the Sphinx. The zodiac was called the Girdle of Isis, the Virgin Goddess. She was the prototype of the Mary concept. The son of Isis was called Horus, the son of Mary was called Jesus, who in name is appropriately equivalent to Savior. Horus is the basis of the myth of Christ or Jesus Christ. His name, Horus, in general meant light, the sun, and hence the name Horizon or the Horus Zone. Also the word Hours comes from this root. What hour is it? Where in the sky is Horus? The ancient word for prayer or prayers was Horizontes. Note, by the luminosity of the atmospheric air ionized by the presence of a strong electromagnetic field it gave the classic flash or luminosity to a spaceship, giving observing people the idea that the sun has descended 
from where the myth of Horus and his stay in Egypt comes from. And in many cultures, the most marked is the Islamic one. You must turn to the east to say your prayers, to say your horizons. Because the sun is worshipped, it is a solar cult. They are told in many cultures that someone has the heart of gold because it means that person is like Horus, because gold, oro in Spanish, means the sun. And it is another reason for worshipping gold in general to this day. In English, the word youngster means young star and is a meaning attributed to Horus again. You have to take into account the link between English and Celtic languages, which in turn were very connected to Egypt. When it is said then, born of a virgin, the concept is astrological. And all of this is clearly put into symbolisms everywhere, in every painting, in every sculpture, there is symbolism, but it can only be seen by a trained mind. They don't hide anything. The Virgin holding the Sun. The Sun is in Virgo. Later, as the normal celestial movement proceeds, the Sun begins to move towards the sign of Aries. So they move the solar god and give him a new identification, so to speak. It is moved to the sign of Aries. The sun is now with Aries, asks Robert. Aries is the lamb? Yes, it's the lamb, Aries. Also, in its procession, the sun rose with Taurus or in the constellation of Taurus, according to the times or the ages, as present at the end of the age of Pisces. This is why Moses, Akhenaten, gets angry when his people continue to worship the bull. When a sphinx contains other qualities, such as eagle claws or wings, it represents in a single symbol the four cardinal points cross of the zodiac. The cross, in itself, it is a deformation coming from the four cardinal points, north, south, east, west, applied to torture as a divine imposition or divine punishment to those who did not obey the accepted status. But as a symbol of Christianity, it originates as part of an Egyptian initiatory rite that was adopted by Christianity. In the Catholic Church, according to documents from the Vatican itself, it is said that they did not use the cross as a symbol until the end of the 6th century. It is established that the use of the crucifix was ratified by the 6th Ecumenical Council in the year 680 AD, and it was decreed that the figure of a man nailed to the cross would be adopted as an official symbol of the Church. Then it was confirmed by the Emperor Hadrian, not Adrian, in the year 772, about a century later, and only then did motifs, paintings and statues with Jesus Christ nailed to the cross begin to appear. Only 700 to 80 years after Christ, this symbol or concept is adopted as something representative of the Church.
The symbol as such is ancient, Egyptian, prior to Babylon and Sumer. There is no verification or no record of a person crucified by the name of Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth or Jesus Christ in the extensively detailed works of the people like Philo, Tacitus, Pliny, Suetonius, Epictetus, Cluvius, Rufus, Quintus, Curtis Rufus, Josephus, Plutarch, and the Roman consulate of Publius Petronius. Nor in records of the time that are hyper detailed on the part of the Greeks and Egyptians. It wasn't until the 6th century that it was decided to use the cross as a symbol. All the records and everything I have found with that symbol only dates back to the 8th or 9th century. How did 800 years pass before using the symbol? Where does the symbol come from? Again, the cross comes from the zodiac. From Earth's observation point, the Sun circles around it in a band only 7 degrees wide. Band that contains all the constellations of the zodiac. At the point where there is a crossing between the two bands, that are the ecliptic and the celestial equators, the equinoxes are found. There are two of each, with a total of four. Spring equinox, summer equinox, autumn equinox and winter equinox. That is the cross. This is what John used as a symbol attached to the 12 zodiacal symbols or constellations within the band of 17 degrees where the sun passes in its procession representing Jesus, the Son, and his twelve disciples, clearly representing a solar cult. Looking at the Cabal symbols, also known as the St. George Cross. That is why the flags of the world have crosses and stars. Many of them are merely astrological motives. Everything is solar worship. Catholics and Christians say, follow Christ and the cross. It means follow solar worship. Dying on the cross. It refers to the winter cross or winter solstice, December 21st, which also at that time coincided with the constellation of the cross. It is where the sun sets for the last time in its cycle because it is when it is the longest night of the year. Therefore, the darkness wins or the sun dies, and three days pass before the resurrection or the birth of the sun. December 24-25, because the sun spends three days in the darkness, being that those three days were not measurable for the ancients. The days began to lengthen again, waning over the darkness. So, December 24-25 is when the sun is reborn and begins to beat the darkness. The sun is born. Jesus Christ, the Savior, is born. The concept of Savior is important to note that 
it again refers to the Son, as in the Son is the Savior or the Son has saved me. It comes from ancient times because it is at night that wild predators such as big cats and hyenas go out to hunt, among others. This is where the fear of the dark comes from and the concept of having survived until dawn because the Son, Christ, Horus, Savior has arrived, who has scared and freed us from the danger of nocturnal predators. In those times, in that area, the sun did not rise, like polar night, all dark for three days. But now the sun always rises these days in that area, even if it's for a short time. Has the position of the sun changed anything since then? No. What happens is that the duration of those three days, December 22, 23 and 24 being greater than December 21, where the day is observed as the shortest of the year, is not measurable. Being shorter, so the darkness wins. It is not that the sun does not rise on those days, but rather that they have the same apparent duration as the longest nights and the shortest day or days. The basis for this is always Egypt, where everything comes from, including Sumeria and Mesopotamia, which are later than Egypt, being that part of the reasons why the royal age of Egypt is disqualified is so that people omit this important key. The concept of bearing Jesus comes from the same thing, the sun being buried and in darkness, because the nights are longer. This concept of the three days in darkness is repeated in the story of Lazarus, in the story of Osiris, and all the Christs of history, as in went to a dark place, and on the third day it will rise again. And the three days as a concept are also the three zodiac signs from Capricorn to Aries, three signs from the death of winter to the resurgence of spring, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, three days, three time periods. Here, another esoteric concept of interpretation is also handled not necessarily Catholic Christian, which is the symbolism that the body or what one was dies. One enters into three days of spiritual process. In English, the spiritual concept of dark night of the soul, very exploited by many spiritual teachers and even YouTubers from the English-speaking world. Everything to be reborn on the third day to our highest or spiritual nature. Jesus dies at 33, procession of the equinoxes. The sun passes through the zodiac and moves through each zodiac sign, each disciple of Jesus, in a 30 degree procession in approximately a 30-day month. It enters a sign at one first degree and completely exits that sign at 33 degrees. This is why it is said that Jesus, the Son of God, died at 33. It is also why there are 33 degrees in masonry because they are solar worshippers, because they are Illuminati, which comes from luminosity or sun. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Jesus of Nazareth, Revelations 22:16. Star of David, 
also refers to the same. The people are forbidden to use astrology. It is said that it is nonsense that has no value. But Jesus and those who set this whole thing up use it all the time. Hence the concept I've told you about before, that people do not use astrology, millionaires do not use astrology, but the kings and the billionaires do. Jesus of Nazareth. There was no place with the name of Nazareth. The word derives from the Egyptian Nazir, which means the prince who is commanded or who was commanded. Nazir means Na Sirius, from the star Sirius. And the word carpenter, as in Jesus was carpenter, comes from the word Nagar, which means priest of the serpent. Everything is a cryptic language. Masons today, instead of referring to themselves as Masons, call themselves Carpenters. The sun is born and the sun dies in the zodiacal signs, taken or considered as feminine. In itself, it is the concept that the sun is born of a virgin and dies in the arms of the virgin, also represented as the night sky, night as in death. The Gospels are not a biography. The Bible is an astrotheological story, just a sidereal myth. It should also be noted that the characters in the Bible that surround Jesus Christ are also representations of astral movements. In degrees of procession arc movement, combined with names and positions altered or adulterated with the known data alteration process to fulfill an agenda that was widely used in the time of Vespasian and Titus of the typography, where names and characters of the elite were used both from Rome and from the places that were under their control, as is the example of the family of Alexander or Alexandrian of Egypt cooperating with Rome, as well as families of interest or influence in Rome at the time. Samson character, for example, in Hebrew it was called Shamash, which in turn means the sun. Daniel and his death with the lion, again the sun. The word Amen comes from Amen-Ra, and the word Adoni comes from the Egyptian solar god Aton, invoking Ra, ancient Egyptian prayer, Amon, Amon, who art in heaven. Lazaro, Lazarus, from the Egyptian El Asura S, or ancient name equivalent to Osiris, with the obvious connection to his resurrection. In India, the sun is called Surya, or Asurya, which is also a woman's name there. If one replaces the word sun with the word sun, wherever the former is found in the Bible, it will be seen that in each and every case each verse fits into the literal heavenly sun and not a man. And so the verses are more clearly understood. Jordan Maxwell I would say 
that you can also replace the word Jesus with the word Son, and everything fits better. Jesus and the cross of the exinoxes behind the halo being the sun, like in the bull, too. The cross of the zodiac behind. Christ, the light of the world. And so Christ arrives with the clouds. Revelations 1. Because the sun is between the clouds. That is why the concept of going to heaven between clouds, as in a person or a soul, is good like the sun. Egyptian symbol of Ka or solar worship. sentence with Amen is in itself directly and whatever the sun says. The symbol of Ka is also related to the ascension of the soul. They refer to Jesus in the Bible at age 12 as the highest because it is the sun at noon that is at its highest point. The custom of celebrating the birth of Christ began in Egypt, derived from the birth of the sun, as I said above, but the first century's Christians celebrated it on January 6th, and the Antioch Council established that it be celebrated on December 25th. But the date of January 6th still remained in part and is still represented with the arrival of the three wise men. The Emperor Constantine asked his Archbishop Eusebius to compile in a single volume by professional scribes all the works of Josephus, also commanded by Vespasian, and he decreed that all this work were the words of God and that the words of the Old Testament should also be annexed to it. Emperor Vespasian in the first century AD proclaimed that the territory of Galilee and Palestine, everything that is considered Jewish territory, was owned by the emperors of Rome, and his decision was fully supported by the Roman Senate and all the emperors who followed were in complete control of the so-called Judaic religions. The Emperor Constantine completed the total alteration of the primitive Judaic beliefs with Vespasian and Titus concepts imposed and created by Rome and by Roman legal decree, the Emperor was the Messiah or the representative of God on earth birth of the papacy. When Eusebius is done with his work, all unauthorized writing must be destroyed by fire, and anyone found in possession of said writings or a copy of them must be skinned alive and beheaded. The name of Jesus Christ did not appear until the time of the Reformation. 14th to 17th centuries. Previously, the names Yeshua Christ and Yeshua Christos were used. It is the fault of the Catholic mind to start with this obsession denying everything that has to do with the physical body, using mind control and psychological influence, and this has been devastating because it has caused trauma after trauma, and it goes against all sanity and mental logic, causing brutal schizophrenia. It also brings out or begins the idea that God is in heaven, therefore not on earth, isolating people from all love and all respect for nature. A 
asks Robert. That is to say that Freemasonry has all this knowledge that you are sharing with us? Yes, at least those of some high positions. I cannot specify how high, but in my opinion, not very high, like two or three. And what about the so-called secret Gospels that have never been included, like Mary Magdalene, Judas, and others? Who wrote them and why? They are all compilations considered to have once been in the scriptures and later withdrawn. They all come from the same base that collected and altered everything. Josephus and his scribes under Vespasian. Okay, and when they wrote them all the Gospels, what was the process? How did they announce having them? They announced that they have found them somewhere or how? How did these texts get to the public? How did they justify their appearance? The appearance of the Gospels as official documents comes from Emperor Constantine, 272 AD to 337 AD, who was the one that compiled them. They are said to be writings from the Jews who were there and saw what happened. This does not agree with the truth because, as we have said, the Gospels were written with techniques and style according to the intellectual tendencies of the time and in Greek not in Aramaic or Hebrew, as would be expected. And those who would have followed Jesus as described would only be farmers and fishermen without the intellectual capacity or education necessary to produce such writings. Another point, the most important, is that Josephus clearly establishes and says in his writings and his legions of scribes that it was they who, under Vespasian's orders, have compiled the basic information and written the Gospels, both the so-called apocryphal and the official ones. They openly admit it, but people don't see that? Okay, they have written and compiled them, okay, but how did they get them into the public later? Where did they justify that they came from? As for example, today it is said, so-and-so has been discovered in the Black Sea. It reveals that so-and-so. They did not get out to the public because there was no press until the appearance of the Gutenberg Press in 1440 AD, when the Bibles were printed. In itself, the Bible is supposed to be the first book or document to be printed. Before this, it was the clergyman's job to make known and enforce what is in the scriptures, gospels, of the priests. The Black Sea papyri are something else. Yes, I know, it was just an example. In themselves, they contain part of the material of the Bible because in themselves they are copies of the materials with which Josephus and company have put together the entire New Testament. The reason the Dead Sea Scrolls were hidden in a cave was to protect them from persecution and destruction from the Romans or at the hands of the Romans. Here is an important point. Because while many scholars take the Dead Sea Scrolls as documents of the time that support the Bible, that is somewhat twisted, or a twisted truth. It is like with the flood. Just because there was a flood does not mean that Noah's story was true. Because in itself, these are documents, the Dead Sea Scrolls, which were used to turn things around in favor of Rome. In these documents, in the collection and narration of the data, an attitude is denoted that is clearly against Rome, where they were represented as horrible invaders. In themselves, the Dead Sea Scrolls are documents that belong to the rebel group, 
later named as Jews, with the guilt of having caused the death of Jesus by Vespasian agendas. And in those texts, they narrate the war and the fight against the invading Rome. Fight that started with Cleopatra, who gave Egypt to Romans. Asks Robert, so is it true that there are 12 zodiac signs or are there more? It is said that there is another, number 13. The curious thing is that, stellarly, there is no record of that number, 13, so I assure you that it is Jesus himself. In itself, I want to say that, stellarly, in terms of constellations and stellar movements and of procession from the sun, there are 12 signs, not 13. It is 12 plus 1. You said the most important point is that Josephus clearly states in his writings. What writings are they? Can I see them? The writings of Josephus are the scriptures themselves, the Gospels. But there are also other data-gathering writings for Caesar Vespasian that are found under the works of historian Josephus as something other than the Gospels. They survive to this day. The exact names I don't know at this time. In the Gospels themselves it says that they have written it under orders then? That's right, they accepted there, but they shielded as a compilation of historical data. Remember that gospel means good news of military actions and victories. Note on the provenance of the Flavian family. Vespasian's father was a tax collector for the provinces. They had no royal lineage, which in itself may explain the especially strong megalomania in those two, Vespasian and Titus.